Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my studio. I'm going to just take a couple minutes to get set up here. How's everyone doing today? It's Thursday. Yesterday was crazy, raining all day. I'm glad it's calmed down a little bit. Hey, Christy. Oh, I'm so glad. Today's going to be really fun, everyone. I hope that you're excited for today's venture. We're going to dabble in self-portraiture, uh, but also looking at reflections in shiny things. So you could, if you need to take a couple minutes to find some things like this, look how cool that looks. How awesome is that? I should take a screensaver of that. Um, things like spoons, things with shiny reflections that you can see yourself in. Um, and you might have a few of these objects on hand. I love using um, this paintbrush. Um, another thing I noticed today, my big stapler, my big uh, staple, not a staple gun, but a, whatever it is, um, I can actually see my portrait in that. So that would be a fun challenge. I've never tried painting this before with my portrait. Um, so you might have a few things on hand, even some dark, shiny objects might work. Um, it depends on the light in your studio, but like my sunglasses have, I can see myself a little bit with those. We're going to do a few just drawing studies to get comfortable and familiar with this approach. And then um, I'll move into working with paint at some point. But if you want to just keep it to drawing today, this is a really fun kind of meditative, introspective way to approach your practice. Um, I have some examples. I, I started painting... Um, drawing my reflection in, let's see, objects when I learned about this artist, Clara Peters, and I just shared the link there. Hi, Roberta. I'm doing great. I hope everyone else is doing great, too. Um, but anyway, I just shared the link there uh, for Clara Peters. It's a detail of one of her still lives. She painted in the early 1600s. She was a Dutch painter and she did really elaborate, really beautiful still life paintings. And let's see if I can find another example. Um, maybe this. Uh, she would make these really elaborate still lifes and then, hey Sarah, she would put little reflections of herself in the still lives. Hi, Joanne. I'm so glad you all are here today. So go ahead and check out that last picture I sent, if you have a second, and just look at um, her elaborate, really beautiful, these the still life. Um, she's many of these. And then if you look at the lid of the jug there, you can see a little, a little image, a little face there. 
Um, and so she would do that. She would insert her self portrait into these very elaborate still lives. So I thought that was terrific and I got really inspired by that. So that's when I started doing um, portraits, looking at objects, reflections and objects. Here's an example of one in um, reflection, self-portrait reflections, you'll come up with lots of different examples. Here's one I found this morning that I really liked. Um, oops, hopefully that works. Um, so those are some examples for you to look at. The reason why I like this approach is that you don't have to be perfect. And a lot of times when people are working on a self-portrait, they're so worried about making it perfect. Um, and getting a likeness right away. And so this is just a fun way to get into it, start thinking about it. I do wanna do self-portraits next week um, and talk about different techniques um, and approaching self-portraiture. But for today, we're just gonna have fun uh, looking at these reflective objects and getting comfortable and familiar with um, looking at ourselves. Because sometimes that can be really awkward too, just the act of really looking at ourselves and, and drawing ourselves. So go ahead and grab whatever. We're gonna do some drawing studies. Um, you can use a pencil if you wish. You can use marker, charcoal even. I'm gonna use markers because I think you can see them a little better on here. Um, and we're just going to start with contour drawings. And I, depending on what you're using, I like to paint my hand into it also because I think that that's kind of fun to do. So I might do something like this is a little weird, but <laughs> um, is that going to work? Okay, I'll do that. So I'm gonna start with just drawing the outline of the spoon and try to go at least life size, but if you can go bigger, go bigger. And if you remember with contour drawings, we're just doing the outlines of things for now. We're not getting into shading or anything. I am going to draw my hand in here. Um, I just think that's kind of fun to do. And if things look wonky, it's okay. Like I'm not even doing a, a blind contour at this point. I'm looking at my paper. I'm looking at um, everything. And again, if it's not perfect, that's fine. It's, I like, I like the really interesting character, characters that evolve when people are first looking at themselves. So here's the fun part. I'm gonna switch colors. Hey, Jennifer. And Joanne, I don't know if I said hi to you, but hi. So the way I'm looking at my spoon, my portrait's upside down. So that's kind of a fun challenge. Hopefully you can see this. Uh, 
don't know, as I draw here, my hand is getting in the way <laughs> of my portrait. But we'll just go with it. Because I'm working with markers, I'm just going to, for fun, go in and do a little color on some of this. But if you want to just keep your drawing um, black and white or just sketches, that's fine. And try to get the distortion of the lines and all of that stuff that you're seeing. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hold it a little closer now and backwards so I can see my uh, portrait the correct way. Um, and I'm just going to do another sketch here.
Good morning, Charlotte. So even though I'm, I'm working on paper right now, and it's not a very good paper, it's not very durable, but I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to talk a little bit more about the glazing method, the glazing technique, because I feel like this could be a good example to show you it. I've attempted a few times now to, to explain the glazing technique. Um, if you wanna just keep drawing, and getting into it, please do. It's it's really sooth. I find it really soothing to just draw these fun distortions and such. So something I I have put out. I've laid out a full palette of colors here. Uh, I usually always have some paints going, but um, I have this full palette going. And I'm going to use my glazing material here. Put some of that out. I'm going to use a soft bristle brush, this one. And I'm going to mix a touch of dioxazine purple into my glazing medium. And then I'm going to brush it over this whole thing. So you see, I'm covering all of that up. Now you can go darker if you want. I might go a little bit darker. I might put a little alizarin crimson in there. It helps to use your transparent pigments when you're doing something like this. So you see how that just pushes everything back. And then from here, I'm gonna go back in and paint some of my highlights and some of my, I might go back in and do some dark areas, some light areas. So, Since I'm painting pretty small, I want to try to find a brush that's a little smaller, but taking some white and a little purple and yellow to get a nice medium gray type of a color. You can see that a little bit, but hopefully you can see how that's 
I'm able to come in here now and paint into this and get some really subtle blending effects. So since my face is so tiny, I'm just going to kind of dot in where I see reflections in my face here. I'm not going to try to go for super detail, but uh, you know, everyone's different. Come back here and try to get some of the light coming through the windows. And especially the bright uh, ceiling fan lights. Then those kind of blend out. So I'm going to take a, hold this up, you can see it a little better. I'm going to take a soft bristle brush that's clean and then try to blend that a little. Not sure if that really worked. But this is a good way to blend is a, a soft bristle a uh, clean brush. Please explain more about why the, why the glaze is the light reflection white with a touch of yellow. Yeah, I did a little bit of orange actually, white with a little yellow and red to make it really bright. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate how to use the glaze here. You don't necessarily have to do it, it's just a technique, but I felt like it was a good way to show how I can push everything back and then start putting in highlights and shadows. And I just did it very subtly. I just did like a very subtle purple glaze to push it all back. And now I can continue to um, build details. So for example, the red of my jacket, I'm gonna take some of my cadmium red medium hue and a little bit of white. Did I mix water? I actually didn't, I just used straight up glaze. So you might be able to see here, I'll pull it in, or I'll bring this up a little bit. You might be able to see here where I'm putting glaze on top. It's just a subtle change. It's just, it's pushing everything else back. It's kind of like when we were working on the black canvas um, the last two sessions. It, it's pushing everything back so that those bright colors will really stand out a little bit better. And then I can still go in there with a dark value and, you know, get some of the darker areas. I'm not really looking at my thing right now, so I'm sort of making this up, but. Did that help, Roberta? The other thing about the, this glazing technique is I find it works a little bit better on a smooth surface as opposed to a canvas, unless the canvas is really smooth.
So I'm going to come in here and keep like going a little bit darker here where there's some of these darker areas. The other thing about the glazing technique is that your paint will stay wet a little bit longer so you can blend your colors a little easier if that's something you want to do. Um, and it, it emulates oil painting a little bit more that way. And for my face, I'm just I'm I'm just kind of blocking in where I'm seeing darks and lights, um, because it's so small, and this is sort of just a study. I'm not really going to get into like trying to get all the teeny details, but if you want to do that, if you want to use a small brush and do that, please do it. It's really fun. And also, um, if you just want to be drawing right now, um, that's great too. Something that I might do is when this dries more, I'll go back into it with a marker. Trying now. Cool. There's also like, there might be like little surface scratches. Like my spoon has little tiny scratches on the surface of it. I usually don't try to get any of that, but just for the fun, I'm going to try it today. Try to get some of the scratches that are on the actual surface of the spoon. Can I go over skin tones? Yeah, I was going to do that more um, on Monday, but 
One of the things about skin tones I'll talk about is like there's not one um, like formula that you use <laughs> to create a skin tone. Skin tones are um, generally neutral colors. So however you get to a neutral color, like if you use orange with a touch of blue and white, um, those are ways that you arrive at skin tones. One of the problems I see when people try to do any kind of skin tone, whether it's the face, the hands, or whatever, is they'll, they'll I'm, and I'm gonna try it right now with the, to show you what I'm talking about with this hand here, is people will look at their thumb or whatever, and they're gonna try to mix the exact color that they are seeing right there, which is impossible to do. But what they do is they'll mix like a big batch of this color that they think of as their, their skin tone color. And then they come in, um, how did I hold this? And they start trying to paint everything that one single tone. And then there's, it, you can get these really kind of flat paintings that way. Also what I notice is people will overuse burnt umber in their skin tones and it, it starts to get kind of gray. They'll overuse their brown. Um, so maybe they'll have this gray tone and they try to do everything in this gray tone. Um, so what I recommend to people is to try to lightly block in, you know, maybe where there would be like some shadows first. Like do an underpainting first like that and then layer the color on top. With that said, I generally mix together yellow, whichever yellow I'm working with, a dab of red, uh, cadmium red or alizarin crimson, some white. That's like where I start. And then I'll mix a tiny bit of purple or a tiny bit of blue into it to, to, so that it's a little more neutral. Um, so, I mean, there's so many different tones for skin. Um, and it depends on what time of day it is. Um, darker skin tones, you might start off with some burnt sienna and maybe mix a teeny bit of blue into that. And then um, for the highlights, yellow, red, and white on top of there. So yeah, like any of these colors can be used for um, skin tone. It also is really about um, the, the values, the darks and the lights. So something I think is always a good thing to do, and maybe we'll do it next week, is to try doing like a portrait with green paint or do a blue portrait. Um, so you can just start to get the values, the lights and the darks correct. Um, generally with darker tone, skin tone people, like you'll see highlights a little bit more than you will on really pale or light skin. So there's, it's about values, creating, like getting the correct values, but also sometimes building up to your, your final painting. Because like I said, I just see a lot of times people will mix like one flat color and then they use that for their entire portrait. So we'll go over that more next week when we are working larger, but that can be something to think about. I hope that helps, Sarah. Um, so anyone, I was going to maybe work on a canvas a little bit today too. So hopefully this is giving you an idea of where you might go. I mean, it's obviously not perfect, but just um, having fun with the distortions of the portrait. Uh, and like I said, you don't even have to really be using paint today if you don't want to.
sense. Let's see. So if you want to just get really impressionistic with it and, you know, not, and by that I mean um, just trying to get the impression of what you're seeing rather than all the details, try, you know, even blur your vision and try to get some of just the highlights and the shadows in there, you could try doing that also. You're welcome, Sarah. Like I said, we'll, we'll go over that even more on Monday. Okay, I'm going to do a, a different one. I'm going to start something different. Um, but maybe that gives you kind of funny looking. Um, let's see. I want to try something on a canvas, actually. I've got about half an hour. I've got this canvas. The surface is a little irregular. You see these lines here? What happened is I had a painting underneath it and then I didn't like it. So I painted over it with um, like some white paint and then I sanded it down so that the brown came through again. So if you create layers with different colors, let it dry, sand it down, you'll get these interesting marks appearing. Um, but you know, you do have to sand it. I'm gonna work with that. And I think I wanna try my um, staple gun, if I can. If I can get a good angle. I don't know if it's gonna work. You know, if you ever want to cheat, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to cheat just for fun, just so you can see. Taking my paintbrush. It fits so perfectly on my canvas. Can't help but to cheat a little. Kind of worked. <laughs> Lisa gave me a start. Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to come back. I'm going to actually use a brush or a marker now. The thing about tracing things is you lose a lot of the cute little quirks that come up in a drawing or a painting. I really like those little irregular weird things personally. So, tracing is fun, but I don't know.
Oh, my hand in there. My cat is scratching at the door. <laughs> Nothing else, this approach really gets you to see reflections and the way shiny surfaces distort the light and images. I hope you all are making some weird and wild paintings <laughs> at home. You're experimenting, Jennifer. Cool. Yeah, this is a big experiment here <laughs> right now.
never painted my face upside down before. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. I think this is a good opportunity to to try painting your hands also into your portrait. When I start to lose things like this, I'll take a darker value and just try to push it out, like define some things. Roberta, if you're out there, I'm curious um, how your glazing experiment went. My cat's scratching again. <laughs> I stepped away from the piece because I tend to overdo things too quickly. Like maybe it was too dark or something?
Cool. I'm glad, Roberta. Yeah, it can really shift a piece. Now, I wouldn't do the glaze on this right now because it's still wet. It's, you really want to make sure that these, you know, it's your paint is dry before you do it because it will make everything blend together. Sometimes with these things, the more you look at them, the more you see. So that's what's happening for me. Could you give more tips on preventing the color from looking flat? <sighs> um, did you mix gray into it or burnt umber too much? That's, or, I'm sorry, if you mix black into it or burnt too much burnt umber, too much brown, sometimes that will make it look flat. Um, if you, uh, I'd have to see what you're doing, but sometimes like people will mix up a big batch of one color and then paint everything that one color and not paint the highlights. I use a lot of yellows and this warm red. Um, in my highlights to warm it up because maybe it looks kind of like cold. It could be the burnt umber. So maybe use a little more red and yellow and don't mix it up all the way. Um, maybe try some what's called broken color where you see like different lines in the striations in the brushwork. Um, also, just going back in it with darker values, like kind of just breaking up those colors more. Um, breaking up those values a little bit more. I don't know if that helped.
Thank you, Ursula. I'm going to keep playing. I grab the sheet of paper so the paint dries pretty quickly on it. Yeah. You could try the glazing thing on there too. Like try doing a thin glaze of like blue or purple over what you did and then paint some of these like warmer orangey kind of um, highlights into it. We'll talk more about glazing next week also. So maybe you're starting to see a little portrait emerging here. There's the eye. Um, I hope all of you are enjoying this process. Um, let me know if you have any more questions. I know there's probably a little bit of a delay on this video, so I can hang out a little longer. Like I said, next week we're going to do this. We're going to work with self-portrait again, uh, this time using a mirror. If you want to work from a photograph, you can, but keep a mirror handy as well. And, um, yeah, I just want to say thanks again for supporting me and supporting this channel. Feel free to share it with your friends if you think anyone would like it. Um, also, feel free to like the video, hit the little um, thumbs up, uh, that really helps um, get it out there a little more, um, but yeah, most importantly, just keep sending me your, your paintings when you make them. I love seeing what everyone's doing. You can check the UrsulaGullo.blogspot to see other people's work. Sometimes I, I post my finished pieces on there also. I hope that helps, Jen, but... Um, I would have to see what you're doing to really help you with that. It's starting to happen. Thanks, Sarah. I'm looking forward to you seeing your piece. Oh, hey, and thanks to the four people who liked the video <laughs> so far. Uh, that's great, thanks. I wanna keep painting. And it's past 12.
but I'm feeling the urge to do that thing I like to do. Where I paint around. Oh, that's not the color I want to use. Okay, I'm almost at a stopping point. I wouldn't say I'm finished, but I am going to just finish up this session and come back to this. And I will post it on my blog when I'm done. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks, Paulette. I'm glad that the glazing helped. Charlotte, this is such a fun way to do a portrait. Love the distortions. Thanks for the inspiration. I'm excited to see you. It's just a really fun way to approach it because people get really self, uh, self-conscious self and like really, you know, serious about their self-portraits and it can be fun. It can be a really fun process and it should be. Okay, I'm going to check out of here. Thanks everyone. We'll get into glazing more next week. So um, I'm excited to see you all on Monday and have a good weekend. Take care. Love you guys. Bye.